Over the last few weeks, I've been implementing Andrew Huberman's tools to improve focus and concentration into my life. Tools that in a very short amount of time will allow you to significantly increase your focus and concentration abilities. Tools like binaural beats, NSDR, and much more. The intentional resting and deliberate defocusing is something that I don't do enough of. These tools promise to help in your preparation, work, and recovery, leveraging the neuroscience of focus. Who's Huberman? He's a neuroscientist at Stanford, and he shared a podcast recently discussing the science of focus and how we can leverage it to be more productive. Let's get beyond the theoretical into practical application of these tools and see, do they actually work? First thing Huberman recommends is to get out early. And as much as 10.30 is not early, if you've just come off night shifts, which I have, then 10.30 feels pretty early. So <laughs> I've just got up and I'm gonna get out as early as possible to try and energize my brain. To help us to understand why we should do it, we need to understand focus. Andrew Huberman has this arrow model of focus that I wanna share with you. An arrow has three different parts. It has the tip of the arrow, the shaft of the arrow, and the propeller on the back. The tip of the arrow represents the spotlight of our focus and the neurochemical that helps us to spotlight focus is acetylcholine. The second part is the shaft of the arrow and that represents the energy that we need to focus and the neurochemical that represents that is noradrenaline. And finally, we have the propeller on the back of the arrow that allows us to keep going through tasks. Each of these different tools tries to target a different one of these neurotransmitters. And the first tool is to get out early in the day and that targets our noradrenaline. So I've found this really, really helpful because when I get up and then just immediately go into work, I find my mood's a little bit low. I can't focus for like a prolonged period of time because I kind of get a bit of cabin fever halfway through the work session. So Andrew Huberman really encourages us to get out early, get sunlight into our eyes and just by doing that and getting that little bit of exercise in the morning of walking around is really helpful for spiking noradrenaline and giving us that energy, the shaft of the arrow, to then apply to our focus. So the second tool that Huberman shares is to delay your caffeine intake between 90 and 120 minutes after you wake up. And I found this quite difficult because I usually wake up just to make my coffee immediately. But he says that if you do that, because of the mechanism of caffeine, basically it blocks the adenosine receptors within our brain. And straight after you've slept, you don't have that much adenosine there because we flushed it away during sleep. So Huberman says your caffeine will be more effective if you delay when you make the coffee. I've been trying this over the last few days and I find it really difficult, but I find that the caffeine or the coffee is a little bit more effective in making me more alert when I delay it versus if I have it straight away when I get up. But I don't think that is a massive impact. I don't see it as a huge difference in helping me focus because I always find caffeine helpful for that. And I love coffee. It's just great. How does caffeine affect the arrow? So caffeine will improve the effectiveness of dopamine receptors. So it works on the back of that propeller and also helps with acetylcholine neurotransmission as well. So will help you to spotlight your focus as well. Let's move on now to one that I've never even heard of, but I've actually found quite an interesting way to help me focus, which is binaural beats. What on earth are binaural beats? Binaural beats provide each of our ears with different frequencies of sound, and that is supposed to impact our brain waves and help us to focus. There's been some really interesting studies, one published in Nature, that show that binaural beats seem to help enhance training and enhance learning. And the way that they seem to do that, according to Huberman, is through dopamine, through enhancing the propeller on the back of the arrow to keep us focused. 
personally, I found them helpful to get me in the right mind frame. About five minutes before I work, I'll put some binaural beats in and it seems to just kind of focus my mind more from tuning out all of the other random thoughts I might be having at the time. So I found these an interesting way to help me focus, one that I've never heard of before and something that I might try to implement in the future. The way that I'm practically going to implement this into my actual routine is when I'm in a coffee shop and I've got annoying people around me having annoying conversations, I'm probably going to put the binaural beats in rather than listening to lo-fi beats or other music because they're shown to actually be helpful for learning scientifically and also I've kind of liked the weird sensation of listening to binaural beats. So... That's how I'm gonna be implementing this into my focus routine. So far, we have talked about the preparation phase for work and potentially using binaural beats during the work session itself as well. But now let's move on to talk about ultradian rhythms to understand how we can optimize the work itself and then move on to recovery as well. Our daily life is mediated by cycles. So we've all heard of circadian rhythms, which help to determine when we spike cortisol, when we spike melatonin to help us sleep, our body temperature throughout the day because it rises before sleep and then it goes down while we sleep. Circadian rhythms help to mediate lots of different processes within our bodies. But what Huberman talks about is another type of rhythm, which is ultradian rhythms. These are 90 minute cycles of our most productive time during the day, followed by rest. And I've been implementing these into my life to see if they actually work. This one's really helpful to organize your calendar into really focused chunks. So I'm gonna do my first one now and I'm gonna open up Keynote and start making some animations. The most helpful part of these ultradian rhythms has been implementing regular rests into my work. Because if I understand that if I do maybe 90 minutes to two hours of really deep work, usually I would just keep going after that and I wouldn't have deliberate rest. But by having this deliberate decompression time, it's helped me to be much more sustainable in my work. So I guess the next question that arose for me was, during those rest periods, what is the best thing that I could be doing to help me to fully rest, to then go into the next productive cycle again? And that moves on to tool number five. So human really emphasizes that after the 90 minute ultradian cycle that you go through, you should do some deliberate decompression. As much as I love a nap, and I usually would just nap, I'm gonna try Huberman's NSDR, which is what he also recommends, which is non-sleep deep rest. So I'm gonna give that a try now for 13 minutes and you can do guided routines from Spotify. So I'm just gonna try that and see what I think. This is deep relaxation without actually falling asleep. And I've been trying to implement this into my rest periods to see if it can help. It just feels a lot like meditation to me. I've not felt a huge difference between NSDR and meditation. I think the difference from reading online between the two is that meditation is much more focus intensive, whereas NSDR should feel a lot more relaxing than the active meditation. I think I might try to incorporate it a little bit more because the intentional resting and deliberate defocusing is something that I don't do enough of. So I think that might make, help me to focus in the future by making sure that I'm doing some deliberate rest and having like a protocol like that to follow uh, is I think quite helpful. So I'm gonna find a different person to do it with because that guy's voice was really annoying <laughs> but uh but yeah i think i might try and incorporate it more into my life my final reflections on this are that i might incorporate binaural beats into my preparation phase because i did find them helpful and they're better than lo-fi beats in my opinion for helping me focus the 
Next one that I've really found helpful, which I didn't expect to, was that incorporating the rest periods has helped me to be more sustainable in doing work over a whole week because I might do loads of work one day and then not the next. So incorporating those regular rests into my work has helped me be more sustainable and I'll definitely be taking that forward. So if you like the idea of learning about healthy habits, then please subscribe to the channel because I'll be sharing more of those with you. Leave a comment down below of which one of these tools you might try in your life and I'll see you soon. Thank you.